Love Line. I'm Dr. Drew. The phone number here is 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. It is Love Line, and tonight I'm pleased to introduce Ricky Rackman, my friend, hey. my former co-host. Of this show, you know him from Headbangers Ball from times gone by. I'm a whatever happened to. I'm no, like no. a step away. No, and you know him now from Thunderbox, where he hosts oh. the UPN show Thunderbox. It's and thankfully, uh, he, I believe, had Adam Carolla murdered tonight, right? So you could come and host Let's the show. Let's get a little slicing of yeah, the gas nice. line. Good. Yeah, Adam, it, what I understand is that it's Adam's it's Adam's birthday tonight. Shh, shh, shh. Yes. Oh, I shouldn't yeah. say that. Go ahead, yeah. Well, you got to give me like the memo. It's like, don't worry, okay, it's don't say. No, go ahead, go, go, go. And, he sh- and I, for people that don't know, like a lot of people remember me from some of the things I'm doing now or what I did do, but I hosted this show for years. For, for years, we, was, we, we was, live, we lived through some stuff together. Yes, we did. My but we hosted surgery. Oh my God, yeah. that was crazy. An earthquake. Remember that? Yes, we did the show the night of the big uh, Los earthquake. Angeles earthquake. We had to climb, climb the building, the elevator, yeah. and. That was fun. And uh, and then it was Adam and Ricky and Dr. Drew for a while. Yep. And then they said, hey, you know, you could clean the bathrooms here. And then it was Adam and Dr. Drew for a while. And then now, Adam, uh, obviously things didn't go good for them because they did TV shows and tours. And I think there's a Loveline breakfast cereal now. And uh, <laughs> we know my story. But then I show up and I'm going to be the guest on the show tonight. And I'm sitting there and... Uh, and and the producer is on the phone, and Adam called in late, and I was just so bummed out because I like Adam. Yeah, but I was really bummed out that he's showing up late tonight. <laughs> it just means more time you for me to host. talk. So what's happening now? What are you doing? Um, right now, I am hosting and actually directing for the first time. There's a show called Thunderbox, which is heavyweight boxing. It's not wrestling because I also, in my resume, I worked for World Championship Wrestling for about three years. Right, which is now owned by the WWF. <laughs> I kill businesses. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> when I went from WCW into Thunderbox, which is a show in Los Angeles, it's on KCAL Channel 9, and it's syndicated nationally. It's on everywhere, and it's heavyweight boxing, but we have girls, like hot chicks, as, that act as like the managers. And, and I got to be honest, the girls on Thunderbox are better looking than the girls in WWF or anything else. And wow. they act as the managers, and then we have boxing. and, and uh, It's sort of the absolute, the, sort of the male, pinnacle of male... Well, you know what? The the thing that's awesome about it is, you know, I've done music stuff and rock and roll stuff and sex stuff here on Loveline my whole life, but I never had the opportunity to do sports. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm a a huge boxing fan, and to be ringside for heavyweight boxing, I mean, we watch heavyweight boxing on TV, but when you see somebody get hit and their eyes like roll back and they're right and they're right in front of you yeah. it's it's hardcore it's like i mean that. i know you know when i did this show we got to meet de la hoya and we got right. to see de la hoya fight several times but when you watch heavyweight boxers i yeah. mean we had wither i went did a witherspoon fight yeah. and it was just it was pretty heavy do you think that you know how men are sort of being maleness has almost become a disease state these days you know it's like uncool to be male you're supposed to be in touch with your feminine i wasn't aware of that but that it's uh, uncool to be a guy you know that's sort of what's happening so it's cool to be a girl well it's cool to sort of be in touch with your feminine side and not and to sort of suppress them i I really wasn't aware of that i think i think the things like the man show and this kind of thing the thunderbox is sort of a reaction to that men still have got to express themselves in those aggressive ways you know i I don't know if it's oh oh, i didn't even get a half an hour Look at you, Adam. What it, wait, wait, wait. Okay. I got to just say one thing. First of all, very nice to see you, Are Adam. Are you playing a rabbi? Let, let, wait, wait, wait. Let something? me just tell you, okay? The last time I was on this show, yeah. which was probably a, a couple years ago, I think I was still with WCW, yeah. Dr. Drew looked like a doctor, looked very, very nice, and Adam looks like, as you know, Adam Carolla. Let me just explain to everybody what it looks like <laughs> tonight, right now. Tonight, yeah. Dr. Drew is wearing like a blue t-shirt and some sweatpants and looking not much like Dr. Drew, and Adam Carolla walks in in a suit and tie looking very dapper. Uh, oh. Rackman, it's all part of the new Adam. <laughs> it's, a, it's a renaissance. <laughs> what, what happened? Something happened. There's uh, a little Adam, a little Drew in each... <laughs> I, I was playing a detective in a movie that uh, was uh, filming down the street. You, you we were just finished up. I didn't even change my wardrobe. Detective slash rabbi? Is that huh, listen, I, jackass. <laughs> what is, is this turning into a roast? I thought this was a celebration of an old friend. This is, is what happens. Is. I leave. He's playing detectives in movies, and I'm getting questioned by detectives. This is where my life has gone in the past year. Well, you, you should have kissed Drew's ass. See, that's what <laughs> wait, I do. Wait, oh, man. Yeah, just man, kiss, that's what kiss. I did wrong. Yeah. 
All right, did, did we talk about Thunderbox? Yes. We did. Well, yeah, Adam we did. actually watches Thunderbox. Watch oh, yes. yes. Yes, I do watch Do you watch for the show. boxing or the chick? Adam is, now, correct me if I'm wrong, and sorry to interrupt, but Adam is a boxer. Like, Adam yeah. knows boxing and, and was a boxer, yeah. correct? Yeah, and I, I watch it, and I enjoy it, and there's it's all heavyweights, right? All heavyweights. And there's good action going on in that I'm ring. Bad. Ricky's great on the show. Uh, Janine, his ex, am, am I right to say ex? Today, yes. <laughs> yes. Is also on that show. Oh, wow. And I was wondering, uh, as I was watching, because I hadn't seen her in previous episodes, right. did you get her on that well, show? Well, what happened was, um, when, I, when I got the job as the host of the show, we started getting all these girls acting as managers. And you got to admit, Adam, right. the girls that are, are the managers on Thunderbox are really great looking women. Absolutely. And they're, and, they're, and they're cool. And I suggested to the producer, I'm like, you know what? I go, you know. It was public knowledge that I had an off on again relationship with Janine, and I said she should be on this show. Do you want to define who Janine is? So everybody, uh, she was my this. girlfriend for like four years, and she used to do adult films. And she's the girl that's on the Blink One Eighty Two album cover, right? right. Super blonde. hot blonde. Yeah, she's a nice girl. Yeah, we just, we just. <laughs> but now you're Doesn't working work. with your. So well, well, well. This right? is well, this is the deal. So doing one of our nice Ricky Janine things, I suggested her do the show. Which worked out really, really good, and she does a great job. Until I also got booked as director on the show. Oh my god! And when we were not friends, I was in there directing, which is the fir first time directing. I love directing, and uh, <laughs> I was directing a scene with Janine, and I was like, you know, why don't you try doing it? And she just turned her back on me, and they just said, oh. Ricky, you got to go home. So you got to go home, not Janine. You got to go home. No, I think people would rather look at her than me. Oh so I had, so I had to go sit in the other room, and I couldn't because she couldn't. You, what you walked Plus in? Plus, she's on. dating heavyweight Ed Mahone. I see. Probably. Okay, there you go. Well, what you walked in with, I was saying that. Do you think that the the sort of the fact that maleness is being sort of repressed these days, you know, and that the Man Show and Thunderbox and things like that are sort of reaction to men being kind of pathologized, you know? Uh, I don't know. I think people have always liked uh, TNA and people have always liked seeing people get the crap built, <laughs> beat out of them. And if you put it in the same show, people are going to watch. Well, what Drew was saying, and I know Adam now think Adam's going to probably agree with me, and Drew's going, well, it just seems like it's more cool these days to get in touch with your feminine side. Cool. I it's wasn't a, aware of that. It's not about cool. No. You, know, you know what I'm talking about. No, I don't. Let's take some calls. You know what I'm talking about. No, I really don't. But, hey, listen, I've been up since 6.30 this morning. I'm having trouble acclimating. Alex, 14. <laughs> but I'm sitting in the wrong chair, Drew. You know, it always screws so I want, me up. I move? Ten more minutes. No, no right. you're in the right chair. <laughs> I'm wearing the wrong clothes, and so are you. Right. Alex? Yeah. Hey. What's going on? You're on Loveline. Right. Alex? Yeah. You care to ask? Yeah, oh, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually know better to start with the show's jackal. kicking off right now. Yeah, Woo. These, uh, yeah, listen, be glad you got out when you did. <laughs> yeah, uh, Whitney, 22. Whitney? Yeah? Hey, what's going on? Um, we were wondering about the long-term effects of opium. Well, Never had that one, have we? Yeah, not not it's phrased in that way. Uh, I'll let Ricky talk about it in a second. But Ricky, can we talk about your... No, your opium would be a drug I haven't done yet, Drew. <laughs> but but <laughs> you're, you're a recovering uh, person. Yeah. Okay, and... Uh, Opium, opiates, and of which opium is obviously one, uh, actually does not harm anything if you smoke it anyway. It's the, it's the routes of administration that tend to be destructive for the opiates. The problem with the opiates is they cause the most fierce, destructive, severe forms of addiction known. So if you are using opium, you have, by definition, profound addiction. And it was going to require a long, long course of treatment before it's going to come under control. What are you using, Whitney? What, what kind? Yeah, no. It's a uh, black tar opium. I don't know. We smoke it but with weed. I heard black tar heroin, but I didn't know there's black tar opium. Mm -hmm. You mean heroin, right? No, they called it opium. Okay, well, heroin and opium are very close relatives, but and so you're smoking it. Yes. Yeah. So th that is profound addiction, and that's going to need an extensive course of treatment. Well, how long you been doing it? Um, we did it for maybe a month straight, and then we quit for a month, and we did it again, but just once. It, it, you will be preoccupied with it. It will come back. It will get worse each time. And unless you do something about this, this is not going to stop. Who's we? Um, me and my friend. 